Good day, fellow investor. Last week, the Fed had a Jackson Hole meeting and they announced that they might slowly start to taper the bond purchases, the cash injections that they buy 120 billion of bonds each month to keep the economy as is, to do help the economy because without that cash injections, all the zombie companies will go bankrupt, all the car leases and everything, it will be a terrible disaster. So they announced that they might start in the future so that they see how the market reacts and they see how much they could taper or even, lo and behold, increase interest rates. And I just wanted to do a quick overview video of what does this mean for the market because I received so many comments, so many emails about Sven, you're 100% invested. What should we do now with the Fed tapering? This means that in six months the stock market will be lower 20, 30, 40%, especially our positions, the emerging markets will be hit even harder with higher interest rates and the dollar getting stronger. So that's usually negative with emerging markets. So we are looking at the portfolio crash of 20 to 50 percent. We should all sell. And why am I not selling? And that, this got me thinking, okay, let's look at what the Fed says, what the Fed thinks, what the Fed farts, what the Fed Fed actually does, how long does it last for the Fed to do something or how long does it last when the Fed actually does something before it does something else. And these are the steps. It's a mess, but the Fed is a mess. Let's explain it. Number one, interest rates and tapering impact on stocks. Yes, higher interest rates mean stronger gravity on stocks valuations and consequently if the Fed increases interest rates then stock market levels should go down. Why? Because everything is compared with interest rates. The effective federal funds rate is now at zero. 10-year treasury constant maturity rate is now at 1.34. So if you lend money to the US government, you will get 1.34% per year and then will get your money back in 10 years. And this is considered the risk-free rate. So at no risk, you will get 1.34% per year. Inflation is 2.5, so you will actually really lose 1.34% per year. But the interest rate is so low because the Fed is buying all of them bonds. Without that, with real pricing on the market, then the treasury yield would be at least 3-4%. The US government would default, no, can default, but would have to print a lot more money. A long story. Nevertheless, if investors, pension funds compare these 1.25 with the dividend yield of the S&P 500, let's say 2%, stocks are still relatively cheap and that's okay. If interest rates go higher, if the treasury yield goes higher to 3%, then you will expect 4, 5, usually 2% premium on the stock market, higher returns from the stock market, and which means 2% now, 4% dividend later, that's a 50% stock market crash if the Fed increases interest rates. That's simply how it works mechanically. Further, maybe this is a chart you already saw. If we look at the correlation between the Fed's balance sheet and the SAP 500, it is practically perfect. You can see here that when the Fed started tapering a little bit in 2017, 18, 19 with raising interest rates, also the stock market didn't go far in that period. So with the crashes, but there were no exuberant returns when interest rates have been increased and the treasury balance sheet lowered. And they have started increasing the balance sheet before COVID. That's something very, very important to know because even then it wasn't possible to taper, it wasn't possible to increase interest rates much. And they started pushing more money into the system before COVID actually came. This is a big representation of how limited the Fed is because if they now start tapering, 
and it has a bad impact on the economy, on employment, then it will be clear that they can't do it. And that's why also the market didn't crash 20% when they said they will start thinking about it, because the market is projecting that the hands of the Fed are relatively tight. Deficits are skyrocketing. That is skyrocketing. Everyone is long everything, asset prices. Everyone is in debt, high debt levels, at zero interest rates. If you start playing around with that, if you retreat some liquidity that has been invested in terrible investments all over the world because of the low interest rates, then you are in trouble. And that's why we haven't seen a stock market crash immediately when the Fed announced that it will consider. They're doing their job, they're testing, they're data-driven, okay, they're trying to manipulate and kick the can down the road as far as possible. And that's also the reason why I'm not selling. I like owning assets, real assets, that no matter how much money is in the system, I will do good. That's the core of investing good businesses, good businesses that will transcend the economy, that will transcend the Fed. And I'm not going to make any action because the Fed says they will do something in the next quarters or something like that. In the next quarters, the Fed might be doing something third. You never know. It's the Fed. Don't trust them. Look at the fundamentals of your business. Compound that. And that's also why I don't make any reactions on the basis of what the Fed will do. If we just look at the S&P 500, so those who sold when the Fed started, let's say, tapering and increasing interest rates here, look at what they have lost. It's almost 2,000 points higher because the same situation was also here. The Fed will start increasing interest rates. The Fed will start increasing interest rates. It will impact stock markets. Here, you should have then sold everything. And that's why it's very difficult to predict. It's impossible to predict what the Fed will do, how it will impact, because we might have more inflation ahead, inflationary crashes. You never know. And that's why the stock market just keeps on going up, up, and up no matter what the Fed does. Because the markets feel, money feels, that this is the best protection against the money printing. So, as always, Warren Buffett says that he has no idea what the Fed will do and that his investment decisions are not related to what the Fed will do. He looks for businesses, he looks for compounders, and he takes advantages of opportunities. And that's what we'll, we'll discuss in the next two videos why am I happy if a crash comes and my portfolio crashes, even if I'm 100% invested? And then I want to really show you Warren Buffett's most remarkable performance from 1965 till 1982. What he did in a bad market that was crashing all over the place. Smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.